Beautiful place, big taste. Buy your Southeast Toyota dealer. Get all the quality and reliability of a Toyota during Toyota's Best for Less sales event. Toyota, moving forward. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. More Rays baseball tonight from Tropicana Field against Boston. Right now, let's go to the field. Here's Todd Callis. Thank you, Dwayne. It is a website Wednesday, which means we will have questions for the announcers and also we'll tell you about our new interactive poll with the change in the lineup for the Rays at the top. We want to know who you think should be the leadoff hitter for the Rays. Three choices. A, the current guy, Jason Bartlett. B, the guy he replaced, B.J. Upton, or C, Carl Crawford. Log on to SunSportsTV.com or FSFloridaTV.com. Click on the raise link to submit your vote. Also, email us your questions all night long to Dwayne and Kevin in the booth at ask.therays at fox.com. Those baseball rule books are out and ready to go, and we are ready for baseball, guys. We just left them open from last night when it seems that we had them open for about half the night. We'll have them open again tonight. Yeah, about five innings worth. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at the starting lineup here for Boston. Jacoby Ellsbury is going to lead it off in center, followed by Dustin Pedroia. Victor Martinez hits third, and Kevin Euclid at third hits cleanup. Jason Bay's back in the lineup, and so is Mike Lowell, the DH. Rocco Baldelli, the former Ray in right. Jason Veritek hits eighth. He'll catch it. Jed Lowry, the shortstop, bats ninth. David Price coming off a very good outing against the Kansas City Royals. Gave up one run on five hits in seven innings. Four and four overall with a 5.10 earned run average in his 60 innings. And the key, as we talked about, really is just uh, pounding the strike zone, fastball command, but also using his secondary pitches, his slider and his changeup. Look at the defense behind David Price tonight. In left field, Carl Crawford, DJ Upton in center. Gabe Kapler in right, and we'll touch on why he's starting tonight against a right-hander, especially Brad Penny. Kevin Longoria, Jason Bartlett, Ben Zobers, Carlos Pena around the infield. And Michelle Hernandez gets to start behind the play, doing the game calling for David Price. Joe Madden's club, 11 games over 500. First time that has been the case this year. After last night's exciting victory in a game in which a lot of people believe the season could have been riding on last year. There was our last night. And so there was a lot of intensity. Well, here's the first pitch of this one. David Price throws a strike to Jacoby Ellsbury. Strike one. Ellsbury starting the night at 303. David Price making his 13th start. And that's a strike. Two quick ones here to Ellsbury. And good command that we're talking about down in the zone at the knees. We haven't always seen that from David. And he's been working hard to get over that front leg and get the ball down. Ground ball chopped to the right side. And Zobrist is there to make the throw. Ellsbury's out of there. Four to three. Two good fastballs down at the knees and a good slider, good tilt to that one, and Ellsbury rolls it over to Ben Zobers. Good start. That's going to be Dustin Pedroia. The Red Sox against left-handers this year are 22 and 13, hitting a few ticks higher than they do overall. 271 against lefties, 267 as a team. Overall, that's a strike to Pedroia. Takes a big cut and fouls it back. He always takes a big cut. 0 2. The homer to last night's game in the sixth inning. Euclid and Pedroia hit home runs for Boston. Kevin Longoria took care of the Rays' power serves, tied it with a homer, and then won it. The 0 2 down a bit. One ball, two strikes. Maybe try to hump up a little bit. 96 on that fastball. Ball toward 
toward center. B.J. Upton to his left a bit is there and makes the catch. Two outs. Saw B.J. in the clubhouse before the game. He's been out of that leadoff spot but hit seventh and he seems to be upbeat. Here's the difference with David Price. I mean, he's getting the fastball down now the last couple out. He's really making an adjustment in the zone and that's the difference between a base hitter and a double and an out. Look at that pitch. That's excellent off the outside corner and down and it gets Pedroia reaching and he couldn't really he couldn't really square that up. Here's Victor Martinez. Hitting right handed and playing first base tonight. And there's a strike. So Price getting ahead in the count. Another pitch a bit in. The count is one and one. Tony Randazzo is calling the balls and strikes. A veteran of close to 10 years in the major leagues out of Chicago. One one. There's a strike. Good, good velocity on that one. Man, good, good location too. I didn't like the call. Take a look. Get the inside corner. Victor thought it was in. Might have been right. If it got the plate, it was just that front edge. That was uh, pretty close. Nothing Victor could have done with that pitch either way. But it does change the count from two and one to one and two. And that pitch just a bit wide. So that takes the count now to two balls, two strikes. That overhead shot again. That's plenty of way. Good six inches outside as it hit the hits the line right the line of the left-handed batter's box. So Ellsbury's grounded the second. Pedroia hit the fly ball to center. Now the 2-2 two -two to Victor Martinez. And a one hopper to short. Picked up by Bartlett. His toss across to Pena. That's going to take care of Boston here in the first. One, two, three. Bottom of the first coming. Rays coming in to hit. No score. Carlos Peña at first, followed by B.J. Upton, Gabe Kapler, and Michelle Hernandez. Big right-handed Brad Penny on the mound. He comes in with a 7-5 record, a 5.07 run average in 110 innings. This is surprising at the bottom there. The opponent's been the average against 291. Brad, we've seen him get it up to 95. He's got a good overhand curveball and a good off-speed pitch to go with it. But he's been a... A five plus, five and two thirds, six times, sometimes six innings pitcher. That's been the he hasn't gone seven once this year in his 20 starts. So it's Bartlett to lead it off against him. 
Jason takes the first pitch for a ball. A little bit outside. Third leading hitter in the American League at 339. And in the top 10 and on base percentage, that's 392. There's a one hopper backhanded by Lowry and a long throw. He got him. Boy, that's quite a play. Lowry wound up well into the outfield after letting go of that throw and getting it accurately to Martinez at first. Well, that was the key, just getting rid of it airborne, getting it on the way. He wasn't going to plan to try to throw. He just got it airborne. That turned balloon over there, but because he got rid of it quickly, that Jason Bartlett by a stride. Nice play. Now it's going to be Carl Crawford. So the Red Sox show some outstanding defense early. Crawford takes one outside of all no strikes. Carl, 28 years old today. Hitting 314. And there's a strike. One and one. Carl playing in two games on his birthday. The one that finished past midnight last night. And this night game as the Rays wrap up the two game set and the homestand. Ground ball, short stop. Lowry gloves and throws. Two ground balls, two up, two down. Seen Jed Lowry make a couple of plays. Let's take a look at the rest of the Red Sox defensively. Jason Bay back out there in left field. Had a little hamstring swing going on the last couple of days. Jacoby Ellsbury in center. Rocco Baldelli gets a start in right. The infield useless. Lowry, Pedroia, and Victor Martinez at first base. Jason Baratek behind the plate for Brad Penny. Evan Longoria will bat with the bases empty and two outs. Game tying home run last night, the game winner. And he takes the pitch inside, 1 0. Again tonight, proud to bring you this game in high definition from Tropicana Field. Crowd continuing to gather here. Strikes. Missed for the breaking ball there. Penny one and one against the Rays this year with a 438. Here at the drop lifetime, he's 0 and 2. Now it's 3 and nothing. Penny. You might well imagine being pretty careful here in Longoria. Yeah, he's trying to get the feel of his uh, overhand curveball. Seen Evan turn around a good fastball, hit one to dead center up at Daniel Bard last night out of the ballpark. It's a strike. And Penny can get it up there in the mid 90s pretty quickly. That pitch 94 or 95. And Brad's very methodical in his turn. He gets. Nice little turn, but very slow and methodical. Gets his balance. And good leg drive. This one sky to center. Ellsbury to his left and in makes the catch. The Rays are up and down. One, two, three. We go to the second inning. No score.
trend with these two clubs in the series. Over the last couple of seasons, the Rays have gone 17 and 12 against Boston, and here at Tropicana Field, 12 and 2. That bullpen, look at the bullpen differential. Yeah, a good run and uh, 1.3 actually, as far as the differential there. The average in the runs per game, pretty close right there. Home record, very impressive. 12 and 2. The Rays 4 and 1 here this year against them. Seven and four overall. Kevin Euclid leads it off, and the pitch is a strike. Euclid having another very good year. Third in the league in slugging percentage. Oh, two quick strikes. Fastball there from Price. Price has come out throwing strikes. And we talked about the back line last night, how it was like to wipe it out. He likes to get as deep as he can in that box, Dwayne, and he's rubbing that thing right now. And you mentioned something very interesting. A lot of umpires later in the game, they'll, they'll take a bat. Yep, they sure and will. Put that line right back. The back foot is on it. Close to being out. Pitch away, and he just bounds it. Keep the uh, one two count alive. Yeah, he's really as far back as the law allows. Likes to get a long look at uh, every pitcher he faces. Cut the fastball, good as well, and another foul. Got a mid 90s fastball. Pretty valuable guy, too, obviously, with the offense. But the fact that he's a gold glover at first and an outstanding third base, and that gives the Red Sox a lot of flexibility to have Victor Martinez under the ball. And another foul ball. He's right over the plate. Aggressive that way. Victor playing first base again tonight for the Sox. He lines it into center. BJ's closing and makes the catch. A line drive to center, and Euclid has retired to open the second. One out with the bases empty. Jason Bay will step in. Tonight's game, simulcast in Spanish, which means you can access this audio feature by selecting the built-in SAP option on your television. Jason Bay. Takes a pitch down. He's had some hamstring issues. Did not play last night. And hits one deep to left. And boy, that's going to get out in a hurry. A 1 0 pitch. And Jason Bay hits his 21st home run of the season to give Boston. A one nothing lead here in the second. Well, they broke out in front last night with a home run in the second, and Bay gives them that tonight. Yeah, the fastball command for David of the first four hitters was actually outstanding. Let's take a look at this pitch. Up. Letter high right there. Basically jumped all over. It's 12 home runs allowed by Price in a little over 61 innings. Lowell, the designated hitter, one ball, no strikes to him. You know, it's just like Matt Garza last night. He, he minimized the Red Sox to three hits and two solo home runs. And if they're solo, hey, it's going to happen. You make a mistake against these guys, but keep the game right there. And Matt was able to do that through seven innings, enough for the Rays to come back. Another strike to Lowell. It's one and one. Three run home runs in those crooked numbers that kill you. you gotta keep your walks down and most of your pitches down. Two and one now. Lowell, as you know, has had the issue with his right hip, spending a significant amount of time on the disabled list. He takes the count to 2 2. Good fastball right under his hands in 
tied him up 95. Beyond the dugout, first base side. Swayton had a miss. Oh, overpowered by the fastball, couldn't get there. Out on strikes, and that's number one for Bryce tonight. He's got good stuff tonight. This might be the best stuff that I've seen. That's 96 and up because he's pitching at 95, 96. Even though Bay got him, he's got really good stuff tonight. Well, here is Rocco Baldelli. Rocco playing right field. And he looks at a fastball, strike one. Those hit five home runs for the Red Sox. Batting 269. That went by him. Boy, he is really humming that baseball right now. It's jumping out of his hand. He's just getting the ball. He's got a lot of confidence. A nice fluid delivery and the ball just jumping. One ball, two strikes. Fastball away. Making his 24th start of the year for the Red Sox. Most of them have come in right field. Two and two. And a pop up right side foul. Carlos Pena chases it with a play. Making the catch to retire the side. Bay's home run. We go to the bottom of the second. One nothing Boston. with Joe Madden. Small ball, regular baseballs. They were out there working so long pregame that Burl didn't even hit with a regular group during normal batting practice. And Pat mentioned what he's hoping the adjustments will do for his game. You're a player and um, you have to be open to, to listening to things, especially if you're struggling. I mean, if you're not doing your job, then um, something's got to change. So for me, uh, we tinkered with some stuff, really, I, I think some minor stuff, just to try to get me back on track. Burrow with our Geico quote of the game, hoping to turn it around for the final 55 games. Guys, back to you. Well, the Rays could use that, and he'll be up second in the inning here. Ben Zobris, Pat Burrow, and Carlos Pena. He could be a crucial part of the Rays' offense, as had been the plan all along. 
pitch from the right hander Penny. The ball, no strikes. Uh, you know, for me, Pat, yeah, 31 and home runs and 99 RBIs is not an accident when you average that. The next train being out a month obviously hurt him, but that's why he was signed because you pretty much know what you're going to get with Pat, and I think there's a lot left in him. Get a two-year contract, and I, I think these last two months you're going to see Pat come out of it. Two and zero. Oh. Foul back. Well, and here's the other thing about uh, Pat Burrow. He's not afraid to work. I mean, he has professional and personal pride, and the willingness and ability to work, and that's what he has been doing out here. That's what the Rays are banking on over the last third of the season now. Up the left side, if that stays fair, that's a foul ball. Slice foul by a few feet along that low wall. Got to have the glove down there. Yep. <laughs> Got a bone bruise. And gets on top of a fastball. You can see it. Plenty foul right there. Best thing for that hand would be to get a little libation I and wrap little, it around uh, that. Yeah, I think a cold libation. That's a nice word. We haven't used that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Last night it was pronate. Tonight it's libation. There you go. <laughs> Aren't you glad you tuned in? <laughs> two to two, the ground ball. Base hit up the middle. Zobra singles. And the Rays have their first base runner. Yeah, ben sticks with it. Penny just powering fastballs right there. We know Ben Zobris is a, an excellent fastball hitter. Gets on top of it, shoots it right up the middle. Now here's Burrow. And back in there is the DH. Willie Ibar had been in there the last couple of games. And the pitch is a strike, a good fastball, and pretty well located by Brad Penny. Naturally, against Pat, he paints him up with 94 on the black. That's the way it is. You know, if you're having a bad year, oh, if you're man. in a slump, well, the guy comes out, makes great pitches on you. See his career numbers against Penny. Yeah, they've matched up plenty. 48 at bats. One and one now. Three home runs, 14 strikeouts against Brad Penny. It's a one two count. I'll tell you just what I noticed right now, and I'm going to have to ask him tomorrow. I, he looks like he's sitting on the back leg a little bit more, trying to stay back and a little bit lower. And I know they worked on that small ball drill that Joe Madden created. But that's just the setup. I'm just talking about the setup. That's what it looks like to me without asking him. And that would be to try to get down through the ball a little better for a low ball. Well, and I think we've seen him, as as a lot of power hitters do, his his swing tends to be a little long, anyway. And I think he'd probably like to be a little shorter. Yeah, to the ball. And, and the lead arm has to be flexed a little bit when you stride. You don't want to bar out, and I've talked about that before. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to lose that lever of the elbow to the hands. That's where the quickness comes from. There goes a runner, wave and a miss, and the throw is not in time. A steal for Zobris. That's his 13th and 16 attempts as Burrow strikes out. One away, and the Rays steal that runner into scoring position. Good jump by Ben. Breaking ball right there. No chance for Jason Veritek. And he does have the big leg kick. One on one out for Carlos Pena.
Carlos sixth in the order. Strikes. Especially as intense as this game was, the game was last night for both sides. Yeah, there was great and great intensity here, a lot of emotion, and no easy innings for for both sides, especially from the bullpen. A lot of men on base. Rays pitchers were able to get the job done, and so were, for the most part, so was Boston until Longoria ended it, the home run. Rays had their chances too. You're working every pitch behind that plate. Bouncing ball foul. So the count is two and one. Here's Terry Francona, the manager of the Red Sox. Could be a good matchup for Carlos Pena because Penny's pretty much right over the top. His fastball is pretty straight. If he gets it in his zone up above Carlos's hands, it'll be effective. But he zones him down. It's a good matchup for Carlos. He hits it sharply foul outside of first. That squares the count at 2 2. We've talked about that repeatedly with, with Carlos. His success really depends upon his ability to be selective. He got ahead here, yeah. two and zero. Oh. Yeah, you know, and Penny, if he gets his curveball going, it's it's going to be effective against Carlos. But Penny isn't a guy that's going to sink it too much, and dip and dive. He's pretty much straightforward, right over the top fastball, good curve. He will throw the off speed though at times. You got to be aware of. It. And this one is down a fastball, and the count is full. Brad has confidence with that fastball, that four seam. He'll just, for the most part, come right after you. I'm not saying he's not trying to make pitches. But he doesn't worry about the count. He's not trying to trick you too much. Raise for the man in scoring position, a 3 2 count to Pena. And he hits a shot. He's not afraid to go right at you. And Carlos got one in his zone and he didn't miss it. No trickery there. Nice low. The back leg and nice short swing getting through the ball. It's his first career home run off Penny. He hit it far enough, but should have counted for two. <laughs> wow, what a blast by Carlos. And here is BJ Upton. Going after the first pitch fastball and fouling that one for a strike. So the Rays answer the Boston run in the top of the inning with two here in the bottom of the second. Going away. One ball, one strike. for the second straight night hitting out of the seventh spot. Lifts a fly ball right side. 
toward the line. Baldelli's coming over to make the catch. So that's out number two. Well, there have been some great baseball the last couple of years played between these two teams, both at Fenway Park and here at Tropicana Field. There's a lot of passion, and well, that's what you want. Our fans love that. The guys playing love it, and it's been a great series. Two very good managers in Francona and Madden. Passion's what it's all about. Uh, and, they, and the guys get up for it. All, all the players get up for it. And, you know, Joe Madden wants the guys to get up for everybody, and they, and they do. They try to, but you can't help it when you're playing the, the Red Sox. Gabe Kapler fouls this pitch away. Kapler's in there against the right-hander because he is three for seven lifetime with two home runs against Brad Penny. Most of his playing time has come against lefties, but the exception would be tonight against Brad Penny. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's what we talked about the other night. Joe Madden is doing that. He's putting the best nine matches up in the best order that night, and that's what you got to do when you got two months to go and you you're down the division by five and a half. Two strikes the count to the Rays outfielder. It's not about testing righty lefty right now. It's about matchups. About the right order, who's getting the job done at the top versus the bottom. That's who's going to get the at bats. They're way past that testing point of the first two months. Now you go down to this part of the schedule. And the Rays, the Rays have a challenging schedule, but their fate will rest in their own hands, and you couldn't ask for anything other than that. One ball, two strikes. And he's added some like, cut fastballs, I'll call them. They haven't really seen him do that much before. So when the four seamer doesn't work, he's getting a little bit of movement now. So that's that's new in his repertoire. That was a big word too, but it was. I'm writing that one. One two is foul. I've got a couple different versions of the spelling on that, so uh, take your pick. Okay, I can't do it. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the flip side, I noticed, and I'll bring this up when I watch Michelle Hernandez, David Price is throwing a, a, a version of a curveball. I saw Michelle call, put a two down, and David took him off and went to the three, which is the slider. Up with a pitch to square the count, two and two. Yeah, it's all about adjustments. Guys keep working. Jim Hickey does, you know, hey, it's, 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 it's a little different wrinkle into your your book of pitches. Well, you know, he, he's 23 years old. There's, there's some development stages to go through there. The other thing, too, is a slow curveball for a guy like David Price can, can act as his changeup. It doesn't have to be a straight change. Hey, there's the cutter again. Yeah, it's full. As Kapler, a nice job of laying off the pitch. We'll take another look at that. You might call it a slider, but it has the same action. But yeah, it's a bigger pitch. That's, that's more of a slider there. But I know that when Brad was with the Dodgers the last few years, he didn't throw that. It was fastball overhand curve. Mostly. And there is a dandy pitch. Fastball well located. Strike three call to retire the side. Rays get two on the blast by Carlos Pena. At the end of two, it's now a two to one ball game, Tampa Bay.
into cheesy sauce for just a buck. Only at Burger King. Limited time only. Price and participation may vary. And by Dodge. Grab life by the horns. On to the third. Two to one now. Jason Veritek about to step in from the right side. The pitch inside. One ball, no strikes. A different look, first pitch, slider. That's that's good game calling right there. Starting to mix it up a little bit. 2-0. Not bad pitches. I'm not saying they're not balls, but that's... Gonna miss. That's where you want to miss. It's some pretty good pitches. Two and one. One away. Okay, this pitch, 88 miles an hour. Look a little off. Kate. side a broken bat back toward the corner that ball's high off the wall bouncing away from Crawford and Veritek winds up at second how about that a broken bat and the big barrel into the bat is down by Evan Longoria at third base now those two ton tone bats usually oh those maple that ball just ran in on him Jason's able to get inside it right there look at this Wow. Nothing left. Well, you don't see that very often. Well, there was a report I read yesterday that the Maple Bats breakage and scrutiny by MLB of the manufacturers uh, 30% down as far as breakage. But, uh, some of the players I talked to said, I don't, I don't think so. They're still breaking. <laughs> well, we see a lot of them. Lowry swing and a miss strike one I'll tell you I, that's really something then that ball hit the wall on a broken bat that just broke right in half well, that's a really throwing the bat hit isn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> all the way down to the third baseman the old time hitting instructors would say, throw your hands, throw the bat head. Well, that's that's what Jason did. That's why he's able to still hit it. Now it's two balls and a strike. Stop Lowry. Foul out of play. Squares it at 2 2. Saw uh, David shaking his head after that pitch. He got a strike out of it, but he missed location. He wanted to go in, and he missed away. And had Lowry put it in play, he gets the runner over the third at least. David, David's looking for a strikeout right here. On the fastball. So Lowry out on strikes. Both the strikeouts have been via the fastball. Yeah, he's got the ability to do that. He wanted to get it in again. It wasn't quite in like he wanted to, but better than the last time. Lowry couldn't get to it. Now we go back around to the top of the order. Jacoby Ellsbury. Ellsbury grounded out his first time. Price got ahead of him. And that's important. Ellsbury's held his own against lefties. He's coming into this game hitting over 280 against left handed pitching. Well, part Key of to it, get ahead. Yeah, part of it too. If he puts it in play because he's left handed, he's got tremendous speed. He's going to 
beat some balls out. He takes some sliders and hit it towards Shorty. Got several infield hits. Ground ball, second base. Silvers with the pickup and the throw to first. So for the second consecutive time, Ellsbury's out of there four to three, and Veritek goes to third. That's what keeping the ball down does. David was able to get that ball down. Pitch it down there, you're going to get ground balls. Now here's Dustin Pedroia. And a third, two outs. Pedroia is always tough. Over 290. That's the other thing. 290 against lefties with just one home run. And 358 with men in scoring position. High fastball, 1 0. JT Howell got a huge, huge double play in the tenth inning yesterday. Bases loaded, one out. Get it right to Evan Longoria, who stepped on third and got the double play across the infield. That was huge because this, this guy's tough to strike out, and as you said, tough with men on base, runners in scoring position. He's had a pretty good road trip. He came in here having swept. Baltimore the Rays won the extra inning game last night. There's the strike, two and one, and a good call, two and zero. Oh. Slider. What you got to do in the big leagues for the good hitters, you got to be able to throw your breaking ball behind the count. That's the good fastball hitters like Dustin Pedroia. Three balls and a strike. Victor Martinez follows Pedroia in the lineup. Having him around, not, that's not going to hurt Pedroia's offense either to have Victor Martinez in behind him. Oh, he's perfect in the two spot. There's a lot of fastballs. Ground ball, third base, charged by Longoria. Ground to first, got it. That retires the side. No runs a hit. One man left. Baratek stranded at third. Bottom half of inning three coming. Two to one. Ray. I talking about Matt Garza pitching the contact. What do you guys actually mean when you talk about pitching the contact, Wayne, Kevin? All right, thank you, uh, Todd. Well, one of the things that accomplishes, and basically, if you, if you get right down to it, and Kevin, I know you have a lot to say about that, 
you just uh, you, you don't want your pitcher feeling as if he has to strike out every hitter. The idea that if he can make a good pitch and pitch to contact, going to do a couple of things. He's going to get outs quicker than trying to strike out everybody, which means his pitch count is going to be lower and he can pitch deeper into games. That's a foul ball back by Michelle Hernandez, and if you have uh, a defense behind you that in, engenders uh, confidence, then you don't feel like you have to be as fine and make the perfect pitch every time. Well, it, it goes along with what happened in Toronto where Jim Hickey had been talking at length with Matt Garza, and he finally talked with Todd in the postgame show that night in Toronto when he matched pitches with Roy Halladay pitch for pitch. And what he did, he didn't strike everybody out. He just pounded the zone with his fastball, got ahead, then everything else worked off of that, his slider and his, his curveball. And he said he's been talking about just going after him with my fastball because especially with Matt, I mean, he's got a 95-96 fastball. You don't have to be perfect in the zone all the time to every hitter. And the other thing that you mentioned is key is, is get deeper into the game. You you have some pitch efficiency. You have some eight or nine pitch innings. You're going to go seven, eight innings, and especially in today's game where starters aren't allowed to go much past 115, 120 pitches. I mean, there are going to be times when I don't care how hard you throw or how good you are, you're going to give up a home run or a well hit ball. But boy, when, when you have the kind of stuff Garza, for example, has, here it is. Try to hit it. Let's see what you can do with this. Well, and the point last night was he, he made two mistakes. It wasn't that they hit the fastballs, which they did for solo home runs. It's that he missed his location. But better that than walking a couple of guys and then having to do that. Then you got a three run home run, which, of course, is a three spot, and I call that a crooked number. <laughs> and when, when you could have. Those uh, parallel numbers up there, you put up a one spot and a one spot, you're only down two nothing. You get a chance to come back and win a game. Base hit into center field, cut off by Ellsbury as Michelle Hernandez makes the turn. And the Rays have a leadoff single here in the bottom half of the third. If you're traveling and can't watch the Rays. If you're doing that right now, you're probably not hearing this. <laughs> but if you do travel at times and can't catch a raise, you can always catch them on your computer with MLB.tv. That's the ultimate baseball experience. 100 out-of-market games per week live on your computer and catch the games you miss on demand. Visit RaysBaseball.com for details where baseball is always on. Maybe a prime example of a guy that doesn't pitch to contact, and he's on the other side. He's not here now. He's in the DL. Is Daisuke Matsusaka? Yeah, he pitches backwards. He really. pitches away from contact. He works around the plate, tries to get you to chase. And even when he's three and one, three and two, he can throw a strike anytime he wants, but he tries to fool you. And that does two things. Number one, his pitch count goes way up. He gets he averages about five plus innings. And number two, he kills your defense when you pitch like that. Your defense won't make plays for you because they're on their heels on the time. Everybody's three and two. Yeah, but he's good for concession sales. <laughs> <laughs> two and all the count. He's got good stuff, but that's how he pitches. You're right. He's got great stuff when he's helping. And it's something that John Farrell of the Red Sox, and I've talked to John about that. They want him to be more efficient and go going after guys. Good ball three. Ball taken by Bartlett. Bartlett made a bid for a base hit his first time. There's John Farrell, and we talked about these two good managers, a couple of very good pitching coaches here as well, with Jim Hickey and John Farrell. That's right, he does a good job. That's a strike. Three and one. Well, I'll tell you, to have a manager and a pitching coach. Handle their bullpens, and these guys have done that. You know, you, you've got two very good bullpens. Three one. Hopper short center. Ellsbury started back, but he's got enough time to come in and make the catch. And had hang time until Bartlett is the first man retired in the race third. Bolton anchored at the uh, back end by Papelbon and you know they've they've added a couple of pretty good arms out there. 
They've been very good, and the Rays have been very good. Played both Colts right there without the jer the uh, jacket on, and, and he's available tonight. Yep. Prefer not to use him. Here's Crawford hitting a high shot deep into left center. Hits home run number 12. Right on the spot with the giant size birthday card. Nice birthday present right there for Carl. He creates it himself. Backdoor breaker. Breaking ball, and it's the way Carl goes. He uses the field. Ten lifetime against Brad Penny. Pitches down to Longoria, and boy, Carl gave that one a ride to left center field. And the Rays with a pair of two-run home runs here: Pena in the second, Crawford in the third. Pitches down, two and zero. Oh. And that pitch, Carl hit was a. A back door. Looked like a flat curveball. That wasn't his slider. Kenny doesn't have the feel for his curve. We've seen him throw more sliders. Now ball three. Three and nothing. The Red Sox pitching coach. You know, we're talking about Farrell. Well, there are people who think he could not only be a pitching coach, but a manager, or he could be a general manager. He's, he's got both uh, experience in the yeah. front office over in Cleveland and wanted to get back into uniform, took the pitching coach's job. He's a, he's a real good compliment with Terry Francona. You know, I had forgotten how many clubs Terry had been with as a coach in the big leagues, and Detroit was one of them, and I forgot mm -hmm. because uh, today there was a game on the MLB channel. It was Roger Clemens' second strikeout performance. My partner on radio talked about him. Terry was given the scattering report on Clemens before that game. He worked for Buddy Bell, I believe, as his third base coach that year in 1996. I don't know what the scouting report said, but Clemens struck out 20 <laughs> for the second yeah. time. And, uh, I was there. I was managing that club at the time. But the point is, that, you know, you gain, you gain a lot, too. When you coach a third like Terry has, and you've been a, a bench coach and a manager now in two organizations. Phillies his first job. You got John Farrell, like you said, he's been a front office guy. It's all about evaluating, too, evaluating your talent. There's strike two, and I tell you, you've got to have the ability to relate to people more and more as a manager and a pitching coach. I think that's true of any executive in any business. Any really. job, absolutely. I don't care what business you're in, you've got to be able to have a, a sense of people about you and people skills. Yep. Inside the Zobrist, and frankly, that's that's one of the things that makes Terry Francona such a good manager, and makes Joe Madden such a good manager. They have that sense. Yeah, they're pretty humble guys too. You heard Terry in a pregame show with Todd, and he was talking about David Price, just giving him the ultimate compliments, and explaining that hey, the minor leagues, you needed to go there. The Rays know what they're doing, and doesn't mean you're going to win 18 games in a big league your first year. You're learning. Fly ball center field. Ellsbury's there. He's going to make the catch. It'll be the second out. Of 
course, it helps too when you've had a, a father that played in the big leagues and you grew up around the business. Yeah, that's right. You knew the business from all different facets. You know how to treat people. Yeah, Terry's been a class act from the time he broke into the big leagues. And we've both known him since he was very young. He is class. Evan backhanded first. Over Sky to center and Pat Burrell settling in here in the batter's box against Penny. Breaking ball stayed inside. One ball, no strikes. Down. Two and all. Yeah, he's thrown more sliders slash cutters because some of them act more like a cutter to me than I've ever seen him. That has to be definitely something that John Farrell they've worked on is to get some more movement rather than that overhand straight fastball. And if he makes a mistake with that fastball, we've already seen a couple of long home runs. There's not much movement on it. Foul ball back. Fastball up and Earl liked the location. Two and one. Matt Brad will also throw a, throw a split. I haven't really seen him throw it tonight, but when he was with the Dodgers the last few years, he had a the 96 fastball you just saw, he had a good overhand curve. He had a really good one. And a good split. That's all he needed. There goes the runner. 2 1 is inside and it won't even be a throw. Longoria took off. Kenny just ignored him and Evan steals his third base of the year. He's three of three in that department. And this also is that, that cutter. Trying to get the cutter on the inside corner. Big leg kick. So Longoria with a walk and a steal. Makes the catch. I'll tell you, Zobris and Burl just got it down off the end of the bat a little bit. Both of them, or those would have been gone. Ray's got two from Crawford on the home run. Through three, it's 4 1, Tampa Bay. Now, 
Time for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac, we've got you under our wing. Well, we had the long game last night. What is the longest game in Rays franchise history? It was not last night's game, but I think it was in the top five last night. The longest game in Rays history. The Rays and David Price have this lead to open the fourth. Victor Martinez about to step in. First pitch drops in for a strike. Nice. Slider. I think he got him the first time on a changeup, didn't he? Yeah, it was. About an 86 mile an hour changeup. This time with a fastball, it's one and one. You know, he's pitching the last couple of starts. That's that's the difference. It's not just going fastball, fastball, fastball. Look at that. 50 pitches, 32 strikes. That's good. And up with it. Two balls, one strike. And that's the other thing. And uh, Terry Francona, when he was talking with Todd before the game, mentioned that about the. Uh, David Price, he, hey, he's got great ability, and he's sure he's going to be a, a very good pitcher. But he he has some developing to do. High popper back at third. Longoria in foul territory makes the catch. That'll be the first out. And what's really encouraging for Price beyond his gift, his God-given talent. Yeah. But what's really encouraging is his makeup. He's he's collected out there. He's poised and he's. Very bright. That's why you know he's going to be a star because he, he'll make adjustments. He gets it. And the first pitch, Kevin Euclid he takes a strike. To the wall as Crawford plays the carom. The throw is going to go into second, and Euclid is there ahead of the throw with his 27th double of the year. This guy can hit. Uh, he tried to double up on Kevin Euclid with the breaking ball, and this one just hung up there. First one was good, second one just, just a hanger, so you just very flat. Belt high, and Kevin doesn't miss mistakes. Didn't miss one last night for the home run. That one just over the heart of the plate and up. Said hit me and he did. So the Red Sox have three hits, all for extra bases, home run, and a couple two base hits. Jason Bay, who homered, put the fastball out to left. Strike call. This would be a good matchup to see how David adjusts. You know, you got a fastball for a strike first pitch. Bay hit a high fastball up out of the zone for the home run, but it was away from him. One ball, one strike. It's another look at the home run. This pitch. Oh. Not over the plate. He got extended. You uh, like that. Jason didn't stand and admire it. He just put his head down and got around the bases. Same pitch. Yeah. It's the same one he hit out. You gotta be careful now. I think you gotta go hard slider. That's the same fastball he hit out right there. Up out over the plate. About the same velocity. Almost identical. Good swing. That tailing action. I think you gotta go try to tie him up too many pitches away. Drop a nice slider with good tilt with the back foot. One, two. Fastball away. Two and two. Hmm. He can get extended on that pitch inside. With his velocity is going to be a lot tougher if he gets it in. 
drops low. And the count is full. Second base, one out, full count to Jason Bay. And he pops it up, foul, will it stay playable? Pena near the dugout has a play to guard. Carlos Pena takes care of Jason Bay's foul pop. Now David came in finally and watch what he did. He tied him up, that's what we're talking about. You got to recognize that both Michelle Hernandez and David Price too. That's a nice adjustment. He gets it in there too, just enough. See, got him on a more on the label than the, than the sweet spot. A nice pitch. And what he did, he just beat him to that spot. He beat him. Yep. Ball away, you can get to, especially if it's up. You just throw your hands at the inside. You got to bring your hands in to get through that ball to hit it on the sweet spot. You got to be a lot quicker, especially on a David Price fastball. Cole takes the first pitch outside, a fastball. One and all. We saw that last night with Evan Longoria and that fastball off the site, though. He was looking hard in, and he got it, and he turned on it. Game winner. One and one now to Lowell. But even Daniel Bard, the fastball he threw to Evan Longoria for the tying home run in the eighth, that was up and away. And Evan just squared it up, he got good extension, he hit it to dead center field. And Lowell reaching. One and two. Young man's got a good arm, though, doesn't he? Daniel yes, Bard. he does. Wow, impressive. He hit 99. Time or two last night. One, two, strike three. Oh, out on strikes for the second time. This time looking at a fastball. No runs, a hit, man left, bottom of the fourth coming, 4 1, Tampa Bay. Couple of two run home runs for the Rays tonight. Time to get the answer to our AFLAC oh, trivia Aflac. question. AFLAC. We've got you under our wing. That's the longest Aflac. game in Rays history. And that would be on August the 4th, of 2000, a 14 inning game against Baltimore went five hours and 16 minutes. And you see where last night's game. Is fourth for 57. How about that uh, ALCS game? Uh, I was home watching it. 
I loved it. Carlos Pena. He looks at a strike. Pena, Upton, and then Kapler. I think everybody on a national scale, Wayne, got a chance to really see what the Rays were about. You know, it, it's fun to watch on TV, mm -hmm. but when you see them in person, I think you even have a greater appreciation. So I see them. You know, I'm a baseball guy, and I, I look at things different. I watch different things on how guys move, get jumps out there, and things like that. But the fact that the Rays didn't go away last year, I think it woke everybody up. That, Thought, well, it's just going to be the Red Sox and Yankees. They'll go away. They'll fold the second half. That didn't happen. Yep. Well, they've, uh, you know, and I still hear analysts this year, not Yankees. us. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Right. Still saying, you know, all the Rays are done. They're at the Yankees this year. It's, uh, you know what? The way these guys battled last night. Yeah, but you know, you know what about those analysts? You don't see them at any of the games. Never. And you, you don't see them here. You don't see them on the road. And, and you've got to you've got to see a team like this. And I really, Absolutely. I, I mean, we've talked about the two most entertaining teams in the American League are the Angels and the Rays. From an entertainment point of view, there's no question in my mind about that. And and this team just keeps at it. And there have been some ups and downs, as we all know. I don't care how good you are. Pena is out on strikes here to start the bottom of the fourth. There gonna be some times when you just think. Boy, is this is this it? Is this the beginning of the end? And, and this team just doesn't go away. Well, I think a couple of things from my vantage point, seeing them in person for the first time, almost on a daily basis, is number one, they're very athletic, and number two, the, the core is young. And boy, over a long haul, that athleticism and that youth that stays strong. And talent will always take over. And then as you learn, as young guys are doing in the big leagues. Like him, I mean, he's made adjustments. He struck out what four times last night? Yeah, four times, but he also homered twice. Yep. You know, <laughs> he didn't get down. He, he kept grinding it out. He knows what his ability is. David Price, you're looking at that tonight, making adjustments. So those last two outs, fastballs in. One one to count to. Upton. Quite frankly, BJ's going through it still. I mean, I know he's had a few couple few years now and he's hit some big home runs, but he's still going through the yeah. learning curve. Yep. The town's gonna and the cream's gonna rise to the top. That's why I really think this number seven spot for him could help him. There's a base hit in the left. A line drive for Upton. One out single here in the fourth inning. I just think that's a good spot for him for a while. Nothing else. It's a possibility of just clearing his mind a little bit. I think so. And that's a pretty good fastball in, and he was all over it. Look at this ball. It's off the inside corner, right on the corner, up a little bit. But DJ got on top of it. And teams do come to come in. And he turned on that one. I agree with you because you're down there in the seventh spot, take a little pressure off from the leadoff spot. Kind of relax a little bit. There's a lot of pressure on a leadoff guy. That's it. It's it's a job number one. You do have to take a lot of pitches, especially right. to start the game. And I tell you, he's so athletic. I, you know, he you just see him, and to me, he reminds me of a Colt. He just wants to run. Absolutely. Just let him go out there and do that. And I think let him be an athlete. That's why center field is so great for him. And I think right now the seventh spot is a great spot for him because of that, because of his athleticism. You just let him be. The player, the athlete that he is, let him get a little rhythm going. Let him have, have some momentum, and I, I think, uh, I think that's a good spot for him right now for a while. You know, he's going to pick a spot right here off of Brad Penny. He sees that high leg kick and be gone. Back in at first. That's a good analogy, like a Colt. You know, I, I think of seeing the Dodgers the last five years of Matt Kemp, their center fielder. They have the best record in baseball. Different body type. Matt is a big, strong guy, but similar athleticism. And they needed to let him play. That's that was the whole point with Matt. And now he's you know, turned himself into one heck of a player. 
But people would ask me, why isn't Matt hitting in higher in the lineup hitting third? I said, first of all, he strikes out 150 times. And it's okay him hitting six or seven. Let him develop down there. Let people forget about him. And and, and you'll see him get more responsibility in the lineup. I mean, that takes time. There, there are reason. Is there there's a reason that number three hitters aren't walking around everywhere? That's absolutely right. I mean, there's not too many guys that can step up into the big leagues like Evan Longoria and take that responsibility on a championship club, which, which he has done. Short time in the big leagues. First full year in the big leagues. Penny holding the ball on Upton after going over there a couple of times. Tom Paul. You know what I like too with Upton seven? I like the danger. It's not right in a row. It's not Upton, Bartlett, Crawford. You kind of break it up. All of a sudden you got a burner in the seven spot. He gets on a lot. It's going to create some fastballs for guys like Kapler or Gross or whoever hits behind him. There he goes. The pitch is down and the throw is not going to be in time. Stolen base for Upton, his 34th of the year. Your Colt got loose. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> He's out of the gate. <laughs> there was no chance to get him. And the Rays steal a base for the third consecutive inning. Now BJ's in scoring position. See, now with one out, Terry Francona, they have to pinch him at second base. And Pedroia is right on the bag almost. The pitch is high to Kapler. It's two and one. And again, Kapler in the lineup tonight because he does have a history of success against Brad Penny. Coming into the game, Kapler three of seven with a couple home runs off Penny. There's Dustin Pedroia right there at the bottom of the screen. I mean, he's about five feet from second. I mean, he's basically holding on. And a fly ball that's going to carry to Baldelli, not too deep to right. And so BJ hangs on at second. Two outs. Now, usually what Terry Francona does now is he'll just have the defense back to take the base sit away. If BJ wants to steal it, he can steal it. Looking right now, Pedroia is way back at second. Lowry's pretty far back at short. That's the way Terry Francona's managed it all year against the Rays burners when they're at second base. He doesn't care if they steal third. He'd rather plug up the holes and have more range defensively. Now Michelle Hernandez. Michelle singled his first time. Scored on the home run by Carl Crawford. One strike to count to the Rays catcher. There's another guy, Hernandez, who has had to battle his way to survive in this game, was in the minor leagues all those years, and he has just battled. Every time he's played, you know you're getting everything he's got. He, he, he does. He gives you the most of his opportunities. And he got the big walk last night in that 13th inning to get the inning going. And he was at third base. And because he was at third base, Terry Francona had to decide whether to pitch to Evan Longoria or Ben Zobris. This one is down. See, he's a guy, if you don't see this team play, most people would just dismiss him. Oh, he's the backup catcher. He's spent all those years in the minor leagues. But he has really applied himself here. And he's had some valuable at bats for the Rays, including the one you just referenced. Mm -hmm. There's a strike. He takes a fastball. One and two. And single swipe second. See the pitch count there on Brad Penny up to 75. And a wave and a miss. Hernandez out on strikes. Oh, that a little bend to it. We are through four, four to one, Tampa Bay.
Ray, Jeff, Rob, Troy, Jim, and others all want to know, Bobby Ramos, where is the equipment bag tonight? We've been back for 11 years when uh, assistant uh, pitching coach Scott Percy had it there for 11 years, and today we put it in the disabled list for a couple of days. He's in a two-week housing. He's, he's on the disabled list? He's in the disabled list inside the club. He's getting some treatment by the, tra by the trainers. Have you ever seen anything crazier in your life at, down in the bullpen? It was unbelievable how, how the ball went right into the hole. <laughs> it, was, it was like a golf game. This is a hole in one for sure. I, I'm glad we won that game. Yeah. No. I, I took a lot of heat from everybody else in there, <laughs> including the players. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our Ask the Bullpen Coach segment. Now, guys, back to Ask the Announcer. We have Mark, Rob, Orlando, Jen, and Joe. It's Carl Crawford's birthday. They all want to know about CC. Will he finish top five in the ALM in MVP? How good is he at age 28 compared to others? Will he be kept on after his contract is up? And one person wants to know from Kevin, is CC better than you thought now that you're getting to watch him play every day? Guys, back to you. All right, boy, that's a lot of ground to cover. Well, Delhi pops up an 0-2 pitch, and that's going to be out of play, holding the count right there. Well, I'll tell you, and I think that last one's an interesting question. You know, you get to see him on more or less an everyday basis for the first time, and I had the privilege of, of watching him when the when the club had Hamilton and Crawford and they had just signed and they put him over in the instructional league down here. Strike three call. I just went out one ball just to see these two young kids play and so yeah. I've had a chance to watch him all along. But your your take on watching it. The, the short answer is yes. And I'm not saying I didn't think he was a darn good player from watching him from afar on national TV and being at the World Series and covering it last year. I knew what kind of numbers he had, what kind of ability. But when you see that, that's why, let me just put your example. When you, when you go to trade for somebody, you send your scouts to watch that team on an everyday basis for a couple of weeks or a few weeks. When you make a move, you make a trade. That's how I look at it. I go, wow, if I were evaluating for a team, that's a guy I'd want on my team. And I'll tell you, the, the, the biggest thing is, for me, is defense. The base stealing I knew, because I'm a big base stealing guy, I love it. I knew he could hit for power. I've seen him hit, and, and even better this year because he's grinding his bats out. He's a better outfielder than what I knew. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think he does a lot he's of a things. He's a gold lover for me in left field that, this year. I, he does a lot of things that, that it's just unknown that people overlook. He works hard. He, he dedicated himself as he as he has the last few years to being in great shape. But because he he played with some injuries last year, he really dedicated himself to being in as good a shape as he could be this year. And it's really been gratifying to see the good things that he's accomplished and has had happen to him. And the fact that he is healthy, that's a foul ball. That's just foul. And boy, it was wow. fair all the way down. To the bag and then took a little turn and was just fouled, so the count is still one and two. But back to Crawford, there's a reason he is performing as well as he is because he just worked that hard this winter, and it's great to see him healthy. And, and in regard to where he stacks up, to me, the one that really jumps out at me since 1900, there have only been two players at this, this stage in his career who've had more hits and stolen bases before their 28th birthday than Carl Crawford. One of them is Ty Cobb. That's amazing. And the other one is Cesar Cedeno. That's amazing. Now the pitch, it's popped up by Veritek, short center. And B.J. Upton's there to make the catch. And so all the other things, and there's a whole list of them where Crawford stacks up. But when you put hits and steals together at the stage he is in his career at his age, and there have only been two guys since 1900 with more, and one of them is Ty Cobb, it, that's impressive. And I guarantee you, if I'm advancing against the Rays, and I'm preparing, let's say, a team for the World Series against the Rays, obviously you concentrate on Longoria and it'll let him beat you you concentrate on pain and the power and all that it's over what he's done the one guy and I said this about Johnny Damon I'm not comparing it to him just saying when the Yankees were in town I said that's the guy you got to keep up and pitch tougher to it's obvious to share in those guys Paul Crawford's a guy I would worry about in a World Series and playoffs because he can beat you with his, his legs yep he can beat you with his bat and I don't just mean base hits 
doubles, triples, home runs, and he can beat you with his glove. And that's the guy I would bear down on if, if I were managing against this team. And it was it was so great to see him get the recognition of the All-Star Game for what will from this point forward be known as the catch and and emerge as the MVP yep. in the All-Star Game. That's that's a it, that's I got right. That's one of the shirts we did get. I haven't gotten them all. I'd like to have them. I, I got a couple of those. Well, there, there might be a couple stashed around here. All for right. You, I, hope, I hope they're hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, he's a fabulous player and a great guy. I'm really I'm really yeah. happy for him. Yeah, it's a great story. The count is three and one here to Jed Lowry. Two outs and a line drive into left field. Crawford's over to make the pickup. And Lowry has a two out single. So four hits now for Boston. They have a single, two doubles, and a home run. Don't forget now the summer select six pack can save you money off the single game ticket price and select the games you want to attend. Packages start at just $57, and you can call 888 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com to make your purchase a third. Of the season left, and so that's a great opportunity to cash in on what could be just a great finish this season. Ellsbury takes a fastball for a ball strike to start this at bat. You know, one more thing too about scouting. When I was managing the Red Sox, the general manager decided to save money, so he got. You know, the TV package for the scouts to watch games on TV, and I just I disagreed with that. I said, you "How gotta, annoying to listen to all those broadcasts?" Yeah, well, that, well, of course that was part of it, but, <laughs> but you can't see the same thing on. on That's right. I'm talking from a scouting standpoint. Yeah, well, Obviously, the people yeah. at home, it's great. But I mean, you've got to. I, I would isolate on guys before the pitches to see where they're at, where they play, how quick they move, how they react. That's foul down the left side. You can't. Scout that unless you tell the guys doing the game, hey, isolate on on the left fielder while the ball's on the way. Well, you know that yeah, doesn't work on TV because you want to see the action what the hitter's doing. You, you'd have to produce and direct. And thank you, heaven knows, <laughs> you can't one do of that. us can do that. Oh no, I, I mean that zero chance. Not the likes of Kevin Gary Anderson and, Kevin. and Gary yeah. Nicholas. Those guys. Okay. I mean geniuses. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're just privileged to be in their company and experience. This one down the left field line, and that's going to be fair, just fair, off the sidewall. Lowry's going to go to third. It's a double for Ellsbury, and now the Red Sox put up a threat. A two-out threat here with minutes second and third. Yeah, you knew you weren't going to keep this guy down too long. Again, it's a mistake because it's up. If it's down, it's a ground ball. If it's up, you got a chance to be a fly ball or line drive, and it was. Played it nicely down the corner to save a run. Let's get over there. Ellsbury was able to get extended there and get to it because the ball was up. Well, here's Pedroia, a big spot now for the 23 year old left hander, David Price. A strike. Pedroia with a fly ball to center to ground ball to third and tough. He gets even tougher in these situations with men in scoring position. That's a big, big sequence right here. One of those turning point moments. Momentum changing moments. Fouled away the other way. 0-2. Price has been in good shape in the pitch count department. Made a few here after getting the first couple outs. Giving up the single and then the double. Okay, and the bear down. Great to hear this crowd into it, too. They're yep. recognizing the importance of this at bat. Two strike count. And another foul. It's likely to continue to be a battle with these two guys. Price with his stuff. Pedroia with his nature. 
here the crescendo once again as the pitch nears. Second time with the 0 2 pitch. And a fly ball to center field. DJ Upton is there. That'll take care of the threat. Two men left on base in the Boston fifth, both in scoring position. Raise half the. home run of the year that made it one to nothing but Carlos Pena answered that in the bottom of the second with a two run blast I mean a blast that scored Ben Zobrist in front of him the Rays added two more in the third on a two run home run by Carl Crawford celebrating his 28th birthday with a shot out of here to left center field David Price and Brad Penny hooked up as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning You know, I want to mention one thing about B.J. Upton last inning. It was actually smart that he stayed there. I mean, he had a free base, but just in case he got thrown out. And now Jason Bartlett, the top of the order. Exactly. Just you know. in case, and that's that was good by B.J. because that was a free base. He could have taken it, but there's always a chance that Kenny does an inside move where he goes quick to the plate, and then you got 9-1-2 instead of Jason leading off the same. That's a strike. And it's one and one. Jason. Oh for two. Lowry made a very good play on him over toward the hole. It's short. On a ball he hit there in the first inning. Threw him out. One ball, two strikes. That pitch just disappeared on Bartlett. Down and away. That was his best slider yet, Dwayne. That was a, that was a good one there. It had good depth, good tilt to it. Two two. And a little more deliberate break to it. Yeah, that's his overhand curveball that he normally throws. 75, and we've seen the slider, that last slider was 81. Two two and a one hopper to second Pedroia retreating to the outfield a couple steps and makes the play. That'll be the first out. Thanks to Heineken Light, you can have the chance to cheer where they can hear you. Upgrade your race baseball experience by winning premium seats right next to the action. For info and to enter, visit Heineken.com. Now Crawford 
Carl at 315 on the year. Fouls. Fastball back, strike one. Rays wrapping up this homestand. They've averaged over 30,000 tonight on this homestand. 30,467 their average. Carl takes it inside, so that's they're going to go up well over 250,000 for this homestand. It's really been good for that. The fans have really come out. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. Coming out here has been fun. It's foul out of play. It's one and two. Picking up souvenirs. Watching some exciting baseball. Hits it on the ground is short. Lowry scoops and throws. Saw a couple of ground balls in the fifth. Two up and two down. One of the first two men retired for the first time since the first. See, that's fun right there. Cow, hey, shake the cowbell for <laughs> a guy like that. Why not? Here's Evan. Strike on the corner. Counting this one, 55 games left. The Rays do have 20% of their games left with Baltimore. The Orioles have been playing better. But that could be a key advantage to the Rays with 11 left, nine with the Blue Jays, and then with Boston counting this one, seven and New York seven. And then when you get into the wild card, they're going to play Texas six, and they've got three tough ones with the Angels. It'll be up on this next road trip. One and one to count. Rays will start this road trip Friday. In Seattle, and Jeff Neiman will be after his 11th win. Felix Hernandez is going to pitch that game. By the way, did you see the note where apparently the Red Sox were in serious talks? I did. Two yeah. or three way trade to try to get Felix Hernandez I, from I did Seattle. See that. Yeah. 23 years old. One, two, line to center. Two, Jacoby Ellsbury. And the Rays are up and down. One, two, three. We are through five, four to one, Rays.
Fame legendary performance. And there's Wade Boggs. Just two days shy of 10 years ago, Wade picks up his 3,000th hit. The only player in Major League history ever to hit a home run as he accomplished his 3,000th hit. This is the hit breakout with Boston, the Yankees, and the Rays. Total of 3,010. Man. Nice way to get number 3,000. Put it on the count to Victor Martinez. There's a long shot back into deep left. Crawford looking up, and that ball is gone. Victor Martinez hits a 1-0 pitch out of here, and it's 4-2. Well, the Red Sox hit two solo home runs last night. If the Rays can keep them to that tonight, that'll be just fine. Yeah, that'll, the goals will be fine. It's the three run shots. That, that was a big out getting Pedro. That's a slider that Pedro got to. Down and in. He knew it as soon as he made contact. There's Kevin Euclid. Pitch is a strike. You got to keep grinding at bats against Brad Penny and not let the Sox get off the floor here. It's only a two run game now. The Sox bullpen was completely exhausted last night. Everybody pitched. Two balls and a strike. Two now. Well, the young lefty here, Price, with 91 pitches right now. Got it remains two and two, and the Rays do get some action up in the bullpen down the right field line. It's Jeff Bennett, the latest addition to the Rays bullpen. So David Price touched for the leadoff home run. Now 2-2 to Euclid with Bay and Lowell due to follow. David's had 94 pitches also. And this one headed up the right side. That's going to be foul. Beyond the bullpen. Count is still 2 2. Price made 104 pitches in his start last Friday against Kansas City. He gave up a run on five hits with three strikeouts and a couple walks tonight. He has four strikeouts. He hasn't walked anybody and has given up two runs, six hits. Both runs, solo homers. Joe Madden's going to manage this like a playoff game because this is a big two game swing right here. You can beat the Red Sox tonight after that dramatic win last night. Round ball foul. And Euclid's having this typical battling at bat. Eight pitches now with a count 2 2. And you've got. Three righties in a row after Kevin Euclid. You've got Bay, Mole, and Baldelli. And it's wide. So the count is full. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if for some reason he loses Euclid if Bill makes a move right here with Bay, because Bay homered, but he also 
Got a really good at bat as last time. 3 2 to fly ball into right field. Kepler on. He'll make the catch. Going away. So a prolonged at bat right there. And on the 10th pitch of the at bat, Euclid flies out to right. Good, good battle. David hung in there. You look at David Price in the freeze cam right here, the core is light. This is the last at bat where he got banged. And this was Lowell right after that. That was in the fourth inning. Excellent pitch over the top shot. It was just got the inside corner and counted a man. And that was a big inning because Euclid was on second base coming out at that time. Jason Bay takes a pitch high. Now after the home run by Victor Martinez, a real battle between Price and Euclid. Important to get him here. Bay takes another one too high. Bay homered in the second inning. Price got a pitch into him and popped him up foul to first base in the fourth. There's a strike. Two and one. Two and old slider. I, I think Joe Madden right now is to the point where he's just going to go hitter to hitter. Even if he gets Bay, he may pull the trigger right here. Comes back with strike two. Took a fastball. Mike Lowell is on deck. Although Lowell has struck out twice against David Price. Everything depends on what happens here with Bay. David stays in the game or not, I think. Two and two the count. Price just over 100 pitches at 101. This is 102. He struck him out. Threw him a fastball. Got it by him. Two gone. Yep, Strikeout number five. That'll keep him in the game. You come back and do that against Jason Bay. A good fastball. Inside again. Good sequence to go back in there a second time and get a strikeout this time. You gotta let him face Mike Lowell. So here is Lowell. And he's reaching for the first fastball away, strike one. Now Price got him on a mid-90s fastball swinging in the second, and then that pitch we saw a moment ago. Fastball that just caught the corner in. And there's strike two. 0 oh, 2. You can see Lowell on these two pitches using mostly upper body. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe he doesn't quite have the hips. And a popper back of first long run for Pena. Just can't get there. Yeah, there are a lot of arms and hands in that swing. Right yeah, now. that was all hands right there. Well, there's a there's a reason that they got Victor Martinez. Obviously a, a super hitter, but you know, there, there has been a, a hip injury to Mike Lowell. So this falls off the outside corner, and Mike's just protecting the zone right there. Two the ground ball is short. Bartlett's got it. The throw to first will take care of Boston. A run on the Martinez homer. That's it. Rays half of inning six coming 4 2 Tampa Bay.
Check it out. See if you can name the big leaguer that batting stance guy is imitating. Well, the answer for you, by the way, in our Rays Live post-game show. Now, that's a stance of a guy who looked like he had a lot of hits. Make sure you watch the post-game show for the answer. Guys, more Rays. Ask the announcer questions at ask.therays.fox.com. Both are more strategy questions. We'll see which one you want to, or both you want to tackle about last night's game. Should Navarro have bunted, do you think? First and second, nobody out. I know you guys touched on this last night. And also, were you guys surprised that Longoria got pitched to in the game-winning situation? Back to you. All right, those are two very good questions as we move into the bottom of the uh, sixth inning. Ben Zobris in there to lead off, and he pops it back foul. Well, there was a question, and we discussed it last night. Yep. In the... Uh, in the 13th when uh, Hernandez walked and Bartlett bunted him up Crawford was up there and and, uh, and then you had Longoria and Zobris talking about it you're going to pitch to Crawford you're going to walk him and they really got away with a bad pitch to Crawford he ground it out hit it hard but I, I think Terry Francona's thinking on that is that uh, number one he was about to run out of pitchers and and how much longer could he uh, go with uh, Saito? And he really didn't. He had Buckholtz down there, but he's supposed to take his next turn in the rotation. He really didn't want to go with him. Supposed to pitch Saturday, so he just let it out. Pitched him. Yeah, I, I thought when you know the, uh, the, the, the runner was at second base there. I, I thought in the last inning there. Bartlett got the bunt down. I, I thought he put he might put Crawford on and try to get Evan to get a double play ball. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I really did. And then when he pitched to Crawford, was fortunate enough to get that out because Crawford hit a bullet to second base. Then I thought, well, there's no way. Even though Evan had struck out four times, uh, there's no way you're going to face Evan with two bases open. But I mean, as hot as Evan has been against the Red Sox, so from a personal standpoint, I I would have put him on. Well, I just think you've got to set up a double play situation there. And that takes nothing away from Ben Zobris, but I think Evan, you know, he's shown he's at 370 coming in against the Sox with seven home runs and 24 guys now. So, you know, that's the guy I wouldn't want to beat me, and he ended up beating him. Ben takes it high. You know, in the other situation, we talked about Gianna Navarro, and you know what I said? I, I thought he should be funny. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to explain what Joe Madden, I'm sure, was thinking, get, letting him have one swing on a fastball because everybody thought he was funny, including the Red Sox. And sometimes you get a, a nice free swing and you might hit a gapper. Yeah, and that's the theory behind that. That's a foul ball. You know, if it's such seemingly an obvious bunt situation, in that case, Madden's thinking, well, you know, the pitcher might just lay one in there, anticipating that it's a bunt situation, and bang, all of a sudden, That's the thought. Yeah. you've got something uh, special going there. Yeah, and you're not in the ninth inning, you're in the seventh inning, so you got nine outs of offense to play with. You're down two nothing. You got Gabe Tapper on deck. You got the corners in looking bunt. The infield was back looking two, and it worked out for the Sox because they got the two, a routine ground ball to short. Three two to Ben. Ground ball headed to second. Pedroia plays it to his left, and that's the first out on the ground ball. One away. And the Rays Summer Concert Series presented by Hess Express continues. The next one Saturday, the 15th of August, when the Rays take on the Blue Jays on Sci Fi Night. And after the game, the B 52s perform the free post game concert. Visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets today. You know, the other thing about Deanna Navarro in that situation, he, he was hitting 295 right handed coming in, facing Okajima. Pat Burrow pitched down and away, 1 0. So, you know, I've done it before. I've, I've got to say, as a manager of business, I've done the same thing before, what Joe was thinking. I've let. One of my guys is struggling. It's hit pretty good from one side of the plate. Have a shot at it. Been burned, but I, I know what Joe was thinking. But I, I just thought I want to get Bartlett to the plate for sure. And as it turned out, Bartlett did get to the plate, got the RBI single, but it became a two to one game instead of two to two. So and you always get second guess as a manager. Well, they're fair you, questions. Yeah, they are. They're, they're great questions. That's part of the, uh, the fun of the uh, game. 
There's a shot. High and deep and gone. Pat Burrow on a dual pitch. It's his eighth home run of the year. The Rays get the run back. That's going to make it 5-2. to two. So Pat Burrow hits his eighth of the season. Boy, that's huge for Pat, too. He wants to contribute so badly. He's working his tail off. And perhaps that hard work paid off as he really got this one. Fastball up, and he didn't miss it. Head down. Right through the ball, and he just puts the bat down and gets around the base. That's a big run getting that one back. And a long home run. You mentioned it last time. Look, he just missed one. His last at bat in the fourth inning. He sure did. Inning. Yeah, in the, in the third. Third inning. Yeah. There's Pena taking a strike. In fact, I thought Zobrist and Burrow just missed a couple. They hit it just a little down off the bat. Well, that one for Pat. He's on the right spot of the bat. And the Rays lead 5-2. to two. It's a big run getting that one back after Victor Martinez is on the top half of the inning. Which is low to Pena. So the Rays have had three home runs tonight. Pena a two run shot in the second. Crawford a two run shot in the third. Solo blast by Burrell in the sixth. Pitch in. Two and one. So the Rays with their power swings in good order tonight. Brad Penny is over the 100 pitch mark now. You know, I mentioned in the pregame he's never gone seven innings this year, which is surprising this year. For me, in a rotation full time. Two, two both bullpens busy now. Lance Cormier's up in the Rays bullpen, and Terry Francona has a righty and a left-hander. They have Del Carmen, the right-hander, and. Billy Traber, whom they just added today, he's busy in the bullpen as well. They sent Josh Reddick down, the outfielder, and added a left-hander after last night's extra inning game. Two-two now to Carlos Pena. Takes the ball three. There's Lance Cormier. Rice have given the Rays six. Went 3 2 in the second and hit a fastball out of here. 3 2 down. He bounces it foul. He has homered and struck out tonight. Look at the AL home run leaders. Carlos tied for second now with 27, tied with Mark Teixeira. The pitch foul down the right side. Well, he didn't have much left of that bat in his hand either. Look at that. Another one of those two tone bats. I'm assuming that's Maple also. Let's take a look at that blast by Payne in the second. Our M. Scott replay. He really got this one. Yeah, he got a fastball belt high and he didn't miss it. Long home run. And a big one because it countered. The Red Sox had gone ahead 1-0 on Jason May's home run in the top of the second. The Rays countered with a two-run home run by Carlos in the bottom of the second. Well, they're collecting the pieces. Well, it went from 30% down to 28% tonight. <laughs> 
And ball four. Pena did not offer as he draws the walk. Farrell comes out of the dugout. Pitching coach John Farrell. B.J. Upton due to hit. And as you mentioned, Kevin, many over 100 pitches now. They don't miss your chance to scoop up a little piece of Rays history. Bit on the 1998 jerseys worn by the Rays and the Oakland Athletics. On turn back to clock night, proceeds benefit the Moffitt Cancer Center and the Rays Baseball Foundation. To place your bid, all you have to do is visit RaysBaseball.com. Well, B.J. Upton, you know, I saw Roberto out there. That's Roberto Hernandez, and he's right at home down there next to the bullpen. The pitch to B.J. Upton is a strike. He was down there talking with Bobby Ramos. Pitch a long time. Some good years. Mm hmm BJ hasn't hit one in a long time. He's due for a long ball. Seven on the year. And now he's down on the count. 0 2. <laughs> and that might have been one of the uh, 1998 versions of the uh, cap for Roberto down there. Jay, this guy is a foul. Hey, you're right about the, the home run. He did not hit a home run in July. The last home run for BJ was on the 30th of June against Toronto. Yeah, he had started uh, showing some good power, driving that ball to left center. Some good line drive power. It's good backspin when he gets on top of those high fastballs, like he did his last hit that that hard, hard single to left. Takes it wide. One ball, two strikes. BJ's been kind of interesting to watch because he took a lot of criticism a year ago for taking so many strikes. We've seen him be a little more aggressive, and, and he does take some pitches, but he's also chased some pitches this year. And that's a whole evolving process of a young hit. Yeah, it is. No doubt about that. There goes Pena. The pitch is high. The throw going to be in time this time. Pena caught stealing for the second time this year. Pedroia put the tag on him. That'll be the second out. Well, he got a good pitch to throw on, too. Fastball up. The BJ had to take. It's definitely a ball and gave Veritek more time to throw. A little modified, quicker step by Brad Penny. But it was more about the pitch. Than it was anything else. It was a slider or a curve. It's safe. BJ fouls it away. Second, two in the third, one here in the sixth. Then. Like the four 
seam fastball. He fouls this one away. I like the way he swung the bat in the fourth. And he's having a good at bat here against Penny in the sixth inning. Evans everywhere. Caught looking. The Rays had a run in the sixth. The home run from Pat Burrow, his eighth of the season. And the Rays lead at the end of six, five to two. Segment. You can always email us for a question at ask.therace at fox.com. Number of viewers, including Cherie, John, and Kenny, want to know about last night when Joe Madden ran out of bench players. Who would have gone in if somebody got hurt or ejected? And another viewer wants to know if, Kevin, that ever happened to you where you had to use a pitcher on the field at some point, guys. All right. Good questions there. Coming off last night's extra inning game. Lance Cormier, the new pitcher. Rocco Baldelli looks at a breaking ball for a strike. The Lance is in there for the 33rd time. Got the win last night, had a little action. As did just about everybody in the game. That's right. Well, they, the Rays emptied their bench. The Red Sox emptied their bullpen. Here we are in the seventh inning. With Cormier taking over for Price. Ooh, very close right there. And it's a two and one count. Six innings for Price. He made 107 pitches. Gave up two runs, six hits, struck out five, didn't walk anybody. Here's those uh, final nine outs I was talking about. Pre-game show. There's, there's one of them. Marco pops it short right. Kapler coming in out from second. And Zobers can't handle it. Marco's going to wind up at second base. A long run for Zobris just inside the line. Got the glove on it, but could not close it out. Well, I shouldn't have said there's one of them. I thought he'd have that for sure. That's that should be an E. That's his fifth error of the year. Took a peek at Kapler, but then he's got it. He's calling it. This one off the tip of his glove. That's why those final nine outs are so tough when you don't want to open the door for the Red Sox, but that one does. So now Cormier will try to pitch around that. It's what you're doing when I say the final nine out to start knocking them off as a manager. You say, okay, now there's eight to go. Start making the 
matching with your bullpen, and the bullpen is up behind Lance Cormier. Jason Veritek. The pitch is outside. One ball, no strikes. And Bennett is up again for the second time and choked the left hander. One and all the count here to Jason Veritek. That's a strike from the outside corner. Started wide and broke over. And Veritek shaking his head. He thought it was outside. Yep. The height was fine. Not to argue when you're a catcher with the umpire when you're trying to get the same thing for your guy. One and two. Second, reaching on the first air of the ball game. Ground ball right side. Zobris has this one in the toss to first. Aldelli takes third. So that's one away. You know the question about what would uh, Joe Madden have done since he ran out of position players? Well, he's he's going to be forced to use a pitcher one way or the other, and one way that he would have to uh, accomplish that is is to forfeit the DH. That's right. Probably the obvious choice or the safest choice. Yeah, that's that's what you do. I, I got to say, it never happened to me in the big leagues, but I have had a regular pitch. And I don't know if I want to go into that story. His name is Jose Canseco. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm well, the one. I don't know. I, I, I I'll tell you the other thing, happen. though. You know about him, and we've talked about that before. But uh, you managed him when when that home run hit off his head. I sure did. He bounced over the right field wall. And I see that replay all the time. From bloopers. Two and zero now. The the count to uh, Jed Lowry. That was in old Cleveland Stadium, that huge stadium before the the new one opened up in 1993. That's a strike. Two and one. No, but I, you know the minor leagues. I was saying, telling you earlier. Take a look at this pitch. Off the outside corner. Gets the call. Two of one. He shot the corner again. This time it's a ball. That might have been better. <laughs> and it's three and one. Del Carmen in the bullpen again. This is a huge out right here if you can get it, even if the run scores. Three one and a ground ball right side for Zobris. And the toss to first. The run does score. Boy, that makes the Burrow home run look really bad. Oh, yeah. it? it sure does, but boy, a, a walk there, two on and one out would have been. Well, I mean, it's a whole different story, obviously, with Ellsbury coming up and nobody on it instead of two on and one out. So that's a big comeback right there by Cormier. I, in the minor leagues, I managed a, a 26 inning scoreless game. It finally got called about 3 in the morning. That was in San Antonio in 1988. And I had to use John Wetland as a pinch hitter because I ran out of regulars. I think it's you could understand. To Ellsbury, sure. 26 innings, you're liable to lose some players. <laughs> yep. Was that at BJ Keith Field? It was. Yep. You remember it. He pinch hit, got a base hit, and then he proceeded to get picked off. About the top of the 23rd inning or 24th <laughs> inning. First pitch he got picked off. Huh. We're bunning, you know. Game finally got called and suspended because it was both sides had nobody left. It was three or four in the morning, and we saw no end in sight, and we decided not to get anybody hurt, the league president. And then we resumed it two days later, and we won it in one inning. That's usually the way it is. You know? One and two. Ellsbury took a breaking ball for strike two. Cormier back. Down with this one. Stayed with the curve ball and the count goes to two two. The Yankees just put a four spot up in the seventh on Toronto to take a six three lead there. Two here on Ellsbury. And a chopper toward the middle. Martin Fields 
Williams and throws in time to retire the side. A run unearned. We go to the bottom of the seventh. 5-3 Ray. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. It's a two-run ball game as we move into the bottom half of the seventh inning. Rays have been very good here at Tropicana Field in this series over the last couple of seasons late. The bullpen continues to be very good for the Rays into this year. Speaking of the bullpen, Danny, uh, Manny Del Carmen is the new pitcher. And Gabe Gross pinch hits here for Gabe Kapler against them. One strike. Brad Penny made 117 pitches. Six innings, five runs. He gave up three home runs. It gives way to Manny Del Carmen. You got to find a way to get that run back. A three run lead again. Gross takes it low. One and one. Now Carmen was in the game last night for an inning. About that, that zero he's got there near the bottom of the chart. No home runs given up. Takes it outside. Two and one. Two and two. Got him out in front. He swung over that one. He did that last night. The game and struck him out. Who had change up when he was behind the count last night? I think it was a 3 2 count, struck him out. That away. That's right. <laughs> Strike three call on the inside corner. Fastball. The Del Carmen strikes out Gross. Pinch hitting. Boy, he's got the ability to paint that inside corner. That power fastball. At the plate. 
not inside. Tough pitch. Good pitch by Manny. Well, Michelle Hernandez. Takes it down. One ball, no strikes. Steps from the track. Two outs. You never know where one of those old Starbursts will break out. Jason Bartlett. <laughs> Outside one and oh. One ball, no strikes. Manny Del Carmen. There's a shot. That's deep to left. All the way back and gone. Jason Bartlett hammers one out. His ninth home run of the year. And the Rays get that run back as Bartlett belts one out of here. The first allowed by Del Carmen this year. Jason gets that run back. Big run. High fastball. Up out over the plate. That's because Jason got the count in his favor. 2 and 0. Oh. He got that hittable fastball. Big run. They're all big runs against Boston. Now here's Carl Crawford. He tries to bunt, fouls it. That's a strike. Well, that's the first home run for Jason Bartlett since he hit one in Texas on the 4th of July. And boy, the Rays happy to have that to get that run back. They gave up an unearned run in the top of the inning. And Bartlett hits the fourth home run of this game for the Rays. Ground ball to third. Euclid has it. On the first in time. So the Rays are finished, but they had a run on one swing of the bat from Jason Bartlett. And now at the end of seven, the Rays again lead by three, six three.
week. Jason Bay and the Red Sox head to the Bronx to take on Mark Deschere and the Yankees in the showdown between bitter AL East rivals. Fox Saturday Baseball this week at 4 p.m. Eastern on Fox. We go to the eighth. Jeff Bennett on the hill now for the Rays. Cormier worked one. Gave up one unearned run and now Bennett makes his fourth Rays appearance. And he faces Dustin Pedroia. The pitch is down. 1 0. Gabe Gross stays on to play right field. Two balls, no strikes. They're the eighth. New York leading Toronto in Toronto. At 6 4. Got to throw strikes to this ball club. Bennett is behind Pedroia. Wheeler is up in the bullpen for the Rays. The Rays used J.P. Howe last night for an inning and two thirds, and he pitched an inning on Monday. There's a strike. Three and one. Eighth inning. Bennett, the third raised pitcher. And he walks Pedroia. That's going to be the first walk given up by Ray's pitching tonight. Take a look here. They stay in the game hold of the day. Brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. The Rays hold leaders. Balfour with 11 and Wheeler with 11. Just as middle relievers keep their teams in the game, you too can stay in the game with Just for Men Hair Color. You can see the, the anguish on the on Jim Hickey's face and Joe Batten and how tough it is. That's why, Wayne, you've heard me talk about it a hundred times about getting those final nine outs. I mean, it is mix and match, and especially when you're playing the, the Red Sox or the Yankees, you've got a lead like this. You just can't open the door. Victor Martinez, the pitch is down. So Bennett walks Pedroia now misses. On the first pitch here, the Martinez Hickey to the hill. I mean, he's, he's he's getting into it. I like this. I mean, he's not messing around, Jim Hickey. They got a three-run lead. He got six outs to get. And every one of them is precious. But the one thing you can't do is put the Red Sox on. They've got to earn it. Strike one, strike two. Chote is up again in the bullpen along with Wheeler. Well, that's protection because you got JD Drew off the bench. You got David Ortiz off the bench. You got Casey Kochman. Probably be the, the third lefty off the bench. And that's why Chote is up there to help mix and match when Dan Wheeler comes in. 1 0. And a line shot. Base hit. That's going to go back toward the corner. Pedroy is on his way to third. The second base goes Martinez, and suddenly it's second and third with nobody out. And the Red Sox put up a major threat in the eighth. Now you got to get the ball down. That's a fastball up. Try to go down and away. Just right up out over the heart of the plate. That'll be it. So Kevin Euclid is due up. Joe Madden heads to the mound. Ball goes to the bullpen for Wheeler, and we'll be back in a moment.
taking his record of 10 and 5 against Felix Hernandez, who's 12 and 4. We'll be with you on Fox Sports Florida. Our coverage begins at 10 o'clock Friday night from Seattle. Dan Wheeler, the new pitcher for the Rays, the Rays' fourth pitcher of the night. He inherits runners at second and third with nobody out in the middle of the order coming up. Kevin Euclid steps in. And the pitch hit on the ground to third. Longoria goes to first. The run scores. So Pedroia crosses the plate. That will make it a six to four game. I haven't had it out at home if he wanted to take it, but instead he's counting outs himself. He's taking the sure out. He had Pedroia, but if Pedroia would have stopped and gotten in the rundown, and actually that was wise by Evan because he gets in the rundown, probably gets second and third. Unless you execute it perfectly. That was a smart play by Pedroia, and I think a smart play by Evan to take the out. Even though uh, the run scored. Counting outs. So now it's Jason Bay. Bay one for three tonight. And a ground ball to shortstop. Parking up with it. The throw to first in time. And so Bay is out. A couple of ground balls here in the eighth. The hitter will be Mike Lowell, the designated hitter. That was an interesting thought process, but I, I, I know exactly what Evan was thinking. He knew that Pedroia was going to stop. And that last ground ball would have scored a run anyway. Because you're playing back. So I, I like that. You're taking outs. And now you're down to four. Now here's Mike Lowell. Go for three. And the pitch is in there. A strike. Lowell and all of his advance against the starter David Price. The 0 1. It's down. One ball, one strike. Lowell struck out swinging. Not a fastball to the second. Called out on a fastball in in the fourth and grounded the short in the sixth. There's Baldelli on deck. Two run ball game. And the 1 1 on its way. And a popper. Short center. Out from short is Bartlett and he makes the play to retire the side. And the Rays get out of that spot. Lowell just popped it into short center, and Bartlett made a nice running grab. A run scores. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Six four Rays.
Z class attention assist of the game. And on this little popper hit by Lowell, a nice job going out from shortstop as Bartlett makes the catch, crossing in front of Ben Zobrist in shallow center field. So a nice defensive play there by Bartlett and a great job by Dan Wheeler. Super job. That's a tough, tough core of the order right there. A second and third, nobody out. You get two ground balls and a pop out and only give up the one run. And again, nice play by Evan Longoria to take the out rather than thinking about rundown where, you know, in all likelihood, it might have been second and third and that would have put more pressure on Dan. So I, I like that. You're counting outs like I talked about. So you got three outs to go. You got a two run lead. Okajima out there now for the Sox. And again, when you try to get that run back, you just keep grinding it. Yeah, there's Evan Longoria to lead off against Okajima. The pitch is a strike off speed to start the inning. There's Wheeler back after getting the Rays out of that spot with one run scoring that charge to Bennett. A little bit wide. It's one and one. So right now the Rays have six runs on seven hits and the Red Sox have four runs on seven. Inside two and one. Having a big night last night with a game tying homer. And the game winner in the 13th. Change up. And there's ball three. Been laid off that one. He got behind on a change. Zobrist will be next. Count on Lagoria now three and one. Sitting on that one. He knew he wasn't going to see a fastball three and one. By the way, Nick Green is now in left field for Boston. There's Nick. Yeah, Jason Bays had a little hamstring twinge we talked about early in the game, so he had his at bat in the eighth. I'm sure that's why he's out of there right now. Three two is fouled back. Out of play. Longoria to be followed by Zelbrist and then Pat Burrell. The Rays have all of their runs tonight via the home run, a two run homer by Pena, two run homer by Crawford, solo shots by Burrell and Bartlett. Two again to Longoria. And he's out on strikes. Well, Okajima started him with a changeup and ended him with one. One away. Got such good arm speed on that. And had, look at that tailing action to go with it. 78 miles an hour. Well, let's see what Ben Zobris can do. was in the game in the seventh inning last night. And a strike. Then single in the second, swipe the base. Rays also have three steals tonight to go with the four home runs. And then checks. Red Sox want an appeal. They'll be coming here. Yep, he's able to hold up. 
One one count. And a wave and a miss. And a change. Why well, he's so tough on righties. Well, you know he's got it. You know it's coming. Good luck. Yep. It's the arm speed. Great arm speed makes it look exactly like it's fastball. One two. Outside. And threw him a fastball. Came into the game at 294. He's right there now. And Zobris takes it down. So full count. Ligori went 3 2. Now Ben Zobrist has gone 3 2. Pat Burrell on deck. Chops it to short. Lowry's throw is in time. Zobris is the second out. Race post game coming up immediately following the conclusion of this contest. So we certainly invite you to stick around for that. One for three, a home run tonight in the sixth. It's just too low. That one for three lifetime against Okajima. JP up in the bullpen for the Rays. See anything straight. And he takes ball four. So Okajima walks. Pat Burrell with Carlos Pena coming up. So Pena has a number of advance against him throughout his career in season and postseason, two for ten. Four strikeouts and three bases on balls. Pena goes after the first one, lifting a fly ball. Center field, Ellsbury making the call. To retire the side. Rays leave a man. We go to the ninth. Six four Rays.
Rays lead six to four as we go to the ninth. David Price gave the Rays six innings. Dan Wheeler went to the mound here in the ninth inning for the purpose of forcing Terry Francona's hand with Rocco Baldelli due up. So the Red Sox then put up J.D. Drew, the left-handed bat. And so Joe Madden goes out to get Wheeler and bring in J.P. Howell. Here's the interesting thing about that. You know, it's the traditional lefty on lefty as opposed to a righty against a lefty. But in this particular case, kind of strange in that Drew is two for 13 lifetime against Wheeler and six of 11 against Howell. Yeah, that That's is strange. That's almost enough of a reference to make you say, well, maybe Dan should face him, but I'd rather have my closer start with nobody on base. You get three outs, and sometimes you got to put those matchups aside and say this, this is the right thing to do because you burn two players right here. And so it's J.P. Howell who has been closing and has been so good for the Rays. It'll be Drew. Then Veritek is due to hit next, and then Jed Lowry is due up. A couple of switch hitters in the inning. So J.P. Howell. Follows Price, Cormier, Bennett, and Wheeler. Wheeler got credit for a full inning in the eighth inning with a couple of ground balls and a little popper. And so J.P. Howell will pitch here for the Rays in the ninth. One thing about J.D. Drew, too, he, he works the count, and that's what the Red Sox need our base runners. But J.P. is a strike thrower, too. And Dan did his job. He did a great job getting out of that eighth. So here we go. Drew stepping in. Pinch hitting. Four ball Delhi. And the first pitch is a strike. Who started last night's game in right field? Going for five, hitting 248 for the year. Now just missed with that pitch. One ball, one strike. And JD won't chase early. He doesn't chase late very often either. He really looks him over. He's always had that ability. Takes a strike. Now it's one and two. Yeah, he's not bothered to have a two strike count on it. Mm -hmm. That'll send Evan Longoria to the shortstop position. He was up even with the bag at third just in case of a bunt. Look at the shift. One, two. Two balls, two strikes. New York hitting in the ninth at Toronto, now leading eight to four in that game. Veritech up there. She'll be hitting right handed. Veritech tonight doubled back in the third. That was against David Price when he broke his bat right in two and still doubled, hit the ball off the wall and left. Since then, a fly ball to center and a ground ball to second. Got a good double play man too here in Veritech. And also hitting from the right side. The pitch 
is in there a strike. Out of the Papelbon loosening in the bullpen just in case. Yeah, and uh, Terry Francona has no right handed hitters on the bench. It's Coxman and Ortiz from the left side. Oh, 2 Maritek missed the changeup. Great changeup right there. Good arm speed. Little tailing action. Jason way out in front. The pitch before, and look at this pitch. Yeah, he does that very well. He gets that inside corner and run back over a little bit, little tailing action. He's done that so many times this year. Jason thought it was in, but we've seen it both ways. A bit off the inside corner, maybe by an inch, but we've seen it both ways. And Jen Lowry, the bat right handed. Down as Lowry had shortened on the bat. Drew at first with one out of the ninth. For six, Cormier for one. Bennett faced a couple hitters. Wheeler for one, and now it's J.P. Howell. Well, J.P.'s actually very similar to the Red Sox Okajima mm -hmm. with the, with the change right. up against the righties in his curveball, like Okajima. Okajima might even throw a little bit harder, about 88. First and Drews back in. Boy, I think it never hurts for a guy who features a changeup to throw to first a couple of times, even if he's not interested in trying to keep a guy close. I just think it, it prolongs the situation for that hitter. Yeah, it does. And that's that's really what that was about. He knows JD's not going anywhere. One and two. Thirty one thousand five hundred seventeen here tonight. One and two the count to Jed Lowry. Walk two call third strikes. Take a look right here. I think that was a little. I'm not sure if that was his. I think that was a little curveball, wasn't it? That's in a trip right there. Two gone. Now back around to the top of the order. Here's Ellsbury. Jacoby Ellsbury. Double tonight in four at bats. And he takes the first pitch. That's a strike. Yeah, that was a curveball that he got uh, Lowry on. That's what's tough because the hitters will play the same thing. It's tough to tell his three pitches. Everything looks the same coming out of his hand. Two 
two strikes the count to Ellsbury. Raised by two, six four, the 0 2 on its way from JP Howell. And a chopper to second. Zobris. Raised left. Zobras to Pena and the Rays have taken this two-game set from the Boston Red Sox. They trail Boston now by three as the Rays go to 12 over 500. It's a 6-4 final.